everyone, my name is Kristen Slick with Mealtime Memories, a classroom kitchen, and today we're gonna to be exploring the trendy world of charcuterie board making. It is all the rage right now, and it's a lot of fun to create it with friends and family. So we're gonna be creating a traditional board. Now, there is a lot of gray area to how to create a charcuterie board, but there are five elements that you need in a charcuterie board to make it successful flavorful and full of textures. So what is charcuterie to begin with? Charcuterie is the French culinary tradition of preparing meats like salami and prosciutto. Originally, meat was at the front and center of a charcuterie board, but now you'll see elements like olive, or cheese and antipasto mixed in. These sweet, salty, and briny extras provide a brilliant balance and give you and your friends the chance to try unexpected combinations. Think of it as like an adult, fancy version of Lunchables that's way more delicious. So when do you make a charcuterie board? Really, any time. Break out the charcuterie board when you want to impress. Although it's traditionally served as an appetizer, it can be an equally strong stand-in for dinner parties. The variety of textures and flavors lets your guests pick and choose what they want and the DIY elements make it fun for everyone. Since boards are 100% customizable, you can serve it at any time of year for any occasion. Charcuterie is especially great in the summer when people love to entertain, but are less likely to cook. And when the holiday season rolls around, charcuterie is an elegant and easy way to feed your friends and family. Now, how do you choose a charcuterie board? I have my traditional stand-in, which is my awesome cutting board turned upside down. So I have a great wood cutting board that on the other side, you'll see all of my love that I add to it in the kitchen with cut marks. But I love when I turn it upside down, it has handles on the side and it has a nice, flat, beautiful surface to present my charcuterie board. You can really use anything. You can use slates, you can use plates, you can use platters, you can use Lazy Susans, whatever you feel like is necessary. You can also use a combination of a few boards. If you want a cheese board, a meat board, a dessert board, whatever you feel like you want for that specific occasion. If you love this style of eating and entertaining, consider, consider getting a complete charcuterie and cheese board set. It's gonna have everything that you need. The, a beautiful um, Lazy Susan or beautiful cutting board. It's gonna have spoons and cheese spreaders, probably labels for your cheeses, little elements of tools here like our cheese knives and forks and spreaders. This is a great thing to get and it all matches. So pick what you like the best and serve with it for your friends and family and add it to your tablescape, obviously. So before we get started about the five elements, I do have a recipe that needs to get into the oven to bake while we talk about our five elements of building a charcuterie board. We're gonna make a baked brie, okay? And even though we are focusing on the fact that it is going to be represented by meats, we do need to get a cheese element in there. In fact, I have a cheese to match every meat. So we're gonna make a baked brie and you're gonna feel like the star of the show when you make this baked brie recipe. First of all, you need a uh, large brie round, which I already cut in half. So it's sliced down the middle and when you open it up, you see this beautiful creamy brie cheese on the inside. Now this can be served just like this, but we're gonna transform it into something elevated that is just gonna totally wow your guests. I do have a really fun brie baker that I bought um, and it's glazed inside and out and it makes it a beautiful oven to table kind of serveware. However, you can use it, you can put it in whatever you want. You can even um, bake it on a plate within your oven, a oven safe plate on your oven as well because then it gets really melty and ooey gooey. So we're gonna put one of our brie rounds at the bottom of our baker, cut side up, now we need to make the filling, the part that everyone's gonna think you spent hours on. Really? Minutes, not even. I have some chopped almonds or sliced almonds you can do. Sliced almonds are so just so expensive, so I just buy the whole almonds and I give them a good rough chop. I have a couple tablespoons of brown sugar, and then what we're gonna add to this is actually Dijon mustard. Dijon mustard is a wonderful ingredient to have in the house um, for uh, sauces like this to add to salad dressings. Um, it really elevates your cooking. It literally is a mustard that is um, 
that has wine in it or white vinegar in it. And it really just has a different flavor than our typical yellow mustard. So we're gonna add a couple uh, tablespoons of Dijon mustard. Think of those Grey Poupon uh, commercials that you've seen growing up all the time. And we'll give this a good stir. And this will be our wet element to our brown sugar and our almonds. It's gonna kind of make a little bit of a paste. And we're gonna put half of it right in the center and the other half is gonna go on top. So when our brie bakes, we're gonna get a crunchy, nutty, sweet element to our beautiful, luscious cheese. So it covers a lot of bases in a charcuterie board. So let's put half of this down on top of our brie. And this is gonna get baked at 425 degrees, a pretty high temperature for about 10 minutes. The other half is gonna go on top again, cut side up because we want the ooey melty uh, of the brie to come along the sides. And this is why I like a brie baker because it contains everything. You can also do this brie recipe with baguette. We're gonna just rely on crackers today, but you can cut up some baguette and toast those as well and have that served alongside. Um, how easy was that? That hardly took any time and people are going to love this baked brie recipe. In fact, I've made this for parties just for myself to indulge in because I love it so much. We're gonna put it in the oven with the lid off, uh, for, like I said, for about 10 minutes. Enough for it to get ooey, melty, gooey and to get all of those flavors inside of our brie baker while we start talking about all the elements of our charcuterie board. So let's bring this over to the oven, nice and hot, and we'll let that do its thing. Let's get back to our charcuterie board. Nice and empty, nothing to add to it. There are five elements that you should have in every good charcuterie board. The first one is cured sausage and whole cuts of meats. So I went to the store and I bought the sausage and, and meats that I wanted. Oftentimes these are pre-sliced, which makes them very easy. So we have a uh, peppered salami. We have, let me double check the front, a prosciutto and a capicola. So three different meat cuts that we're gonna use in our uh, charcuterie board. You can also use salami, pepperoni, whatever your tastes and flavors are. I like these cuts because they're nice and thin and you stack them up into beautiful kind of flowery arrangements. So I like our meat cuts. These definitely come um, as a standard part of the charcuterie board because that is the classic charcuterie board is revolving it around those meat cuts. Like I said, this was originally served in France and people would come together at lunchtime and all eat off charcuterie boards. And it was a really interesting way for people to gather and socialize during their regular day, lunchtime. It wasn't even a dinnertime thing where we tend to gather for dinner time. So we have our meats, that's, uh, that's element number one. The other thing that we need are some something bready. So you can use uh, toasted bread, you can use crostini, you can use breadsticks, crackers, anything that will add that carby element to your board. So I picked up some of these really cool little crunchy breadsticks. I like to put them in um, a jar that's a little bit taller I do like to add a little bit of height to my charcuterie boards, just to kind of, it's art, artsy, to add a little bit different element to it. So some breadsticks, and then I'm gonna stick with a variety of crackers. And these are just a variety that I bought at the local grocery store. There's six different versions, and I'm gonna kind of spread those around my board as well. So everyone can pick, again, that DIY element of a charcuterie board. So we'll put that off to the side because we'll build that with that in just a second. What else you need is something sweet um, on your charcuterie board because you're gonna have all these really savory foods. You wanna break up that palate a little bit with a, fr a spreadable fruit jam, a chutney, um, ap dried fruits like apricots or some regular berries as well. So for ours, I picked up uh, a really nice blackberry jam if somebody wanted to dip it in their crackers. And I have some nice fruits. So I have some berries, some grapes that we're also gonna spread across. Could you imagine eating a whole meal of just meats and cheeses? You're just gonna feel kind of blah afterwards. So this helps break up your palate a little bit and it's gonna be used also as decoration on our charcuterie board. So a couple sweet things. You'll also notice that when I show you the next thing, 
I have something crunchy and something sweet. I have some chocolate and nuts in our charcuterie board. So this is a nice little mix. Get some chocolate pairings. You get something crunchy with your nuts. Again, an element of a charcuterie board, something crunchy, which you're getting in your breadsticks and you're getting in your nuts as well. So as you're seeing me build the, some of this out, um, it's making probably a lot more sense why you're seeing certain elements on a charcuterie board. My berries got my board a little bit wet. The last two things are something briny. I like to include olives on here, something acidic, um, grainy mustard that you can pair with the meat is another great option as well. I'm an olive fan and I have my cute little charcuterie spoon that I put in there. So olives is something that you can add to your plate. And then last but not least, cheese. You already saw one of our cheese recipes, which is our brie in the oven. I also picked out a really creamy um, goat milk cheese. This is a garlic herb cheese, so it gives it a different flavor and texture. Um, nice and creamy. I didn't totally open it yet because I wanted to make sure I showed didn't dirty my board. And then I just cut up some really extra sharp cheddar cheese. So a different color, a different texture. Um, if somebody's not into the creamy cheeses, they definitely probably will feel more comfortable with a um, traditional cheddar cheese, okay? So that's gonna be added to our board as well. The last thing before we actually build out our board and get our brie out of the oven is what do you actually serve wine and champagne wise with a uh, charcuterie board? Uh, wine and champagne is often a natural fit when charcuterie is served at a party and what you pour depends on your board. Champagne is probably the best option to serve because a lot of people don't uh, typically serve champagne with foods. Um, champagne has a distinct acidity that pairs very well with a lot of the salty and briny fatty foods, um, like the aged cheeses, the almonds. Um, it goes very well with the berries. So champagne is often something that is a great addition to charcuterie boards. Popping open a bottle of champagne also offers a nice palate cleanser because it's often not too sweet or too heavy. That's something nice to be able to serve with a uh, charcuterie board. Otherwise, I would recommend sparkling wines and crisp white wines that go that, that really go with any charcuterie board. So I'd consider like Prosecco, Rosé, Sauvignon Blanc, or a dry Riesling. The good rule of thumb is you want wines with a low alcohol content to keep all of your flavors balanced. Um, so whatever that means for you, go ahead. Really, to me, there's no bad wine, but um, so I prefer those lighter wines when I go with a lot of heavier foods, okay? All right, so after all of those amazing tips, um, let's get started with our charcuterie board and building that out. Let's start adding our meats to our board. And this is the part where I like to take my three different meats. I often work in odd numbers. Um, it's just kind of an artsy thing that I've picked up over the years. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to build them across the center of my board on a diagonal because we want them to stand out. Our meats and cheeses are our standout options. So we're gonna take our prosciutto here and when we pick it up, we're not just gonna lay it flat on our board because or else it's gonna suction itself to our board. We kinda wanna roll it and stack it so that it's easy for people to grab and people to feel comfortable to grab. So we're gonna pull apart all of our prosciutto pieces. And again, you can build a little bit of height to, to it. And I love these little meat packs because it gives you just enough, especially if it's a smaller party that you're entertaining. If you're not into these kind of like whole muscle cuts of meat, like the prosciutto and the capicola, go ahead and go with salami and pepperoni and summer sausage, whatever you feel comfortable with. The capicola, I'm gonna put it at one other end, so a little corner piece over here. And we're just gonna kinda keep flouring them so that people are comfortable grabbing little slices. And when you build a charcuterie board, if you had many, many cuts of meat, you don't have to add it all at one time. You can, charcuterie boards are refillable. So you're able to go back and add things that may be popular and people are eating a lot of. So we have our another stack of meat over here, our prosciutto in the middle, and then I'm gonna go with our salami on the other corner. The 
this one's a little tougher. It's a, it's a little bit, it kind of likes to flower open on me. So you'll see me kind of patting it down a little more. But again, build that height. Everything doesn't need to be flat and stagnant. Build some dimension. Use your textures to your advantage. And if they flower open, it is what it is. It's a natural look to the charcuterie board. All right. We're gonna leave a pretty decent open space on one corner of the board for our brie. Um, so probably this corner down here, I'm gonna leave open for our brie. This corner up here, I'm gonna add our other cheeses. So I'm gonna, again, stack some of our cheeses, make it accessible for people to come grab it. Another rule of thumb that I like as well is um, like our jam. You're gonna wanna put that on an edge of a board too. You don't wanna put that in the center so people are dripping all over the center of the board. You wanna put that kind of on an edge as well. And we'll go ahead and flip out our beautiful herbed goat cheese right onto our board with our different coloring variations and textures. I mean, look at how cool that looks. The fact that we have this stiffer cheese, we have this creamy cheese, we have garlics and herbs, we have our beautiful little jam sitting here. Perfect little window for our brie cheese that is gonna come in a little bit. Now we're gonna go in and actually kind of decorate our board. Now that we have some of our other um, pieces in here, we'll throw our olives over here by our cheese. Our nuts we'll throw next to it. Again, building that height variation, we'll put our breadsticks in the center as well. And then we'll go ahead and decorate it with crackers and berries. And I call it decorate it because that's literally what you're gonna do. You're gonna go through and kind of fill in all of the empty spots that you have on your charcuterie board after you put some of your main elements on there. Remember, five elements. We have our sausage, we have our cheese, we have something bready, something crunchy, something briny, oh, six elements, something sweet. So I kind of sometimes group that crunchy and bready together because oftentimes I use crackers. So all of those elements are gonna be seen on a traditional charcuterie board. I'm gonna add some of our bigger groupings of, um, of the grapes to add some color. We're, I like to do a mirrored version on my charcuterie boards as well, so I kind of mirror them on either side of the charcuterie board. Gonna add some nice blackberries, and I'm gonna put those closer to the jam so people understand that it's a really pretty blackberry jam. Kind of, you know, decorate it and for form and function and we'll throw some nice bigger strawberries in here as well. Somewhere where somebody can grab them. I like to leave the stems on because they're grabbable. And you see, yes, it's overflowing, but it's not to the point where you couldn't move this board. Um, it's not gonna fall over. Everyone can see what's available to them. Um, and it's not uh, overwhelming to look at. It's pretty to look at. And I wanna dive in and grab some of this food. Let's see, how many strawberries do I need to add? One more strawberry. And then sometimes you play with it and you gotta move stuff around a little bit. Like that blackberry just needed a new spot so I can add in my strawberry. We also need to add our crackers. So I'm gonna grab just a few of each. Again, don't overwhelm your guests with, you know, stacks and stacks of crackers. You can just throw them in here along the way and they can find which ones they like. And then you can go back as a host and refill them as people eat the crackers. I often like to stand them up between things because otherwise they just fall and collapse. You can also do a fun little stack of crackers if you have room. So I might do a fun little stack over here by our brie. Couple more on the other side. But you can see how this comes together pretty quickly once you have all those different elements from your board. So we're pretty much stacked up on our board, we have our meats, we have our cheeses with one more to come. We have something bready, crackers and breadsticks, crunchy as well, our nuts, something sweet, our berries, our jam, our chocolate, and we have something briny, our olives. So something for everyone and it gives people a chance to really try something new. I'm gonna head to the oven to pull out that brie because we're just about ready to uh, serve that up. Another reason I love using the wood cutting board is it gives me a really good base for a hot dish like the brie. 
put that there so I can close up the oven. Oh my goodness, that brown sugar is caramelizing and buttery and good. Oh my goodness. And once those bubbles settle down, you're gonna really see the meltiness of the cheese. I'll pull some out and go, try to do a good cheese pull for you. But that is nice and hot. And look, it's gonna go perfect on the edge of our charcuterie board. The lid, I only use if it's something that's gonna not be served right away and you can just cover it up to let it stay warm and melty. Otherwise, the cheese will come back together and become a little bit more coagulated. Still totally edible, just not necessarily as appealing. I'm gonna take that lid off though, because I do wanna show you a nice cheese pull with this great charcuterie board. Let me find a really decent cracker. I'm gonna use my awesome little matching spreader. We're gonna go in here and get some amazing topping for our cracker here. So that beautiful melty brie, the crunchiness from the nuts, the brininess from the Dijon mustard, the sweet from the brown sugar. I'd bite right into this right now, but I would burn my mouth. So you just get a picture of how beautiful that looks right on top of our charcuterie board. And then you can leave your little spreader kind of poked in the center so people know that's what they can use. Otherwise, a charcuterie board is very easy to put together. It's something that you can absolutely change up, build to any occasion, and build many different kinds of them. But just having those five slash six elements will really pull it together beautifully every time. Thank you again for joining us for this do good, feel good challenge, building charcuterie boards. Hopefully this was another way to expand your palette and try something new and creative. My name is Kristen Slick with Mealtime Memories at Classroom Kitchen. Thanks so much for joining me today.